Hi, I'm Marty Nemco. <clears throat> I stipulate to these being the choices of an old man, but these were the would be the things I would take with me uh, if I had to spend a week on a desert island. There are seven songs, uh, three books, two movies, and one art print. Um, I wish I could play the music for you, but it, uh, YouTube makes me uh, uh, kind of prohibits it. So I'm just gonna. You can Google it. Anyway, the first thing I'm gonna the first piece of music I would take with me is the overture to the Broadway show Gypsy. I love overtures. It's a much underrated music form in my old fart opinion. Uh, and of all the overtures, the overture to Gypsy is my favorite. If you just go to YouTube and search on uh, overture Gypsy, you'll, you'll hear it and can accept or reject as you see fit. <clears throat> Another piece of music I love is called Spiegel im Spiegel um, by a guy named Arvo Part and the uh, means mirrors in the mirror. It's a simple, repetitious piece, and it's my go-to when I want to think big thoughts, even do mu media musings, or simply just relax for a few minutes. Next, uh, Frank Sinatra's rendition of Autumn Leaves. Um, this was my mother's favorite song, and uh, Frank Sinatra's rendition is my favorite rendition of it. Not so much as singing, but the real heroes of it are the arranger and the orchestrator. It's just gorgeous to me. Also, the YouTube video of it has got beautiful images of the fall. Lovely. Uh, Mendelssohn Violin Concerto. In the 60s, while everyone else was listening to the Beatles and if they were cool, the Stones, the first album I ever bought was Isaac Stern playing both that, the Mendelssohn Violin Concerto, and my second favorite violin concerto, the Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto. Ultimate nerd, I still am. Begin the Begin, played by Doc Severinsen's Tonight Show Band. Not only do I love it, but it evokes the fond memory of, I directed the show called Broadway Bound and Neil Simon play. And that was the music I chose for the exit music. After the show, as people walking out, that's what they heard. Too. It's really upbeat. It's fabulous. <clears throat> On the Armed Forces Medley, played by the President's Own Band. That's actually the name of it. It's a military band. I know it's not cool to like military music, but in this case, screw that. I love this. And I find that it puts me in a good mood to listen to it. And finally, uh, in the music category, uh, a CD called the, A Child's Lift, Lift, A Child's Gift of Lullabies. I bet you didn't know that an album of lullabies could win a Grammy. Well, this one was nominated. I think it should have won. And I listened to it uh, most, you know, for months at a time every night before I go to sleep. Then I get sick of it after a while and I change. But anyway, um, I think lullabies are great. Now, a couple of books that I love. Three. Two of which I've read. One I haven't read yet but I'll tell you why in a minute. Anyway, um, the first book I would take with me on that island would be The Fountainhead by Ayn Rand. I find it to be a vital antidote to today's zeitgeist in which collectivism and egalitarianism are revered and meritocracy and individual initiative are disparaged. Um, another book I love, uh, and I have read carefully, loved it. I actually listened to the audio book, All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr, D-O-E-R-R. Um, it's the most compelling novel I've ever read. So I would take it to a desert island to reread. Uh, it's the story of two kids. Uh, one is a member of Nazi youth, and the other is a Jewish child, but it's much more than with some, you know, Holocaust thing. And it's beautifully written and a page turner. So all the light we cannot see. Very human, very wonderful. And finally, a book I haven't read, but it's called Introduction to Genomics by Arthur Lesk, L-E-S-K. I've always wanted to understand the basics of genomics because I believe that genomics will eventually enable us to triumph over horrendous diseases and limitations, both physical and mental. I haven't had the patience to study genomics, but if I had to spend a week on a desert island, probably I would find the time. A couple of movies I love. About Schmidt. It's a guy who retires from a soulless job. He has a bad marriage, a bad relationship with his daughter. He tries to find meaning driving across country in an RV uh, in part to try to convince his daughter to not marry this loser guy, and he's unsuccessful at that. And a subplot is his fostering a poor kid in Africa, um, who it turns out is unable even to read his letters that he sends to the kid. And in the end, uh, uh, Schmidt feels he's going to die soon and his life is a waste. I know, real upbeat and cheery, but I love that movie. Uh, and then uh, The Godfather. It's the iconic story, of course, of the multi-generational Corleones, a mafia family. And then finally, a piece of art. Um, my very favorite piece of art, and one hangs in my office, a print of it, is Matthew, St. Matthew, even though I'm an atheist, but St. Matthew inspired by an angel by Rembrandt. Uh, like I said, a print hangs in my office. It's my idealized self. 
And if you, you know, you'll see, uh, if you Google it and you'll see images of it, uh, the forehead and his hands are really compelling to me. And you might enjoy that. In any event, those are the things I would take on a desert island for a week. I wondered if uh, maybe you can think of things you'd want to take a desert island. It can be clarifying or help remind you to do the things you've uh, always enjoyed or do enjoy. In any event, I do thank you for watching. I welcome your thumbs up and accept your thumbs down. I always look forward to your comments and especially like it if you hit the share button below. Share on your social media so that my efforts can have broader impact. And I am flattered if you choose to subscribe to my channel. In any event, I do thank you for watching. I am Marty Nemco.